Hello Twin Flames, this is Victoria and I'm here with your daily energy check. I hope you guys are doing great. I uh, hope you are doing amazing. <laughs> uh, and as for me, um, I have been working on my health, feeling much better, uh, feeling like this. there are several transits that are happening right now. And one of the big ones is that um, Mars and Venus are going to be in conjunction uh, in Aquarius. Well, we are in Aquarius season, uh, which is a pretty big deal because it's a conjunction of like the masculine and the feminine energy. But for me personally, I have my Mars in Aquarius. So for me, this particular change is a pretty big deal. And of course, there are like layers to it. But I feel like I really need to dedicate time and explore it more. Maybe I'll speak about it in the community tab. We'll see a little bit more about these transits and what they bring in. Tomorrow, we obviously have a tutu portal, so I'll do a reading for that. But today, let's do a quick check-in on the energies of the day and how it impacts uh, the twins and what's happening with them. I will start with Noracle deck today. I brought the Angel Therapy deck. So I love this deck so much. And I love that it gives guidance, right? So you're mad, you can imagine that it's coming from angels, from guides, from a higher power, depending on you know, what you believe in. But this is like the words of spirit coming to you directly. <laughs> okay, so let's see what we have for divine feminines, first of all. And then, yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll move on with the horoscopes today as well. So for the feminines, we have, you are a powerful light worker. Ooh, I love this. It is safe for you to be powerful. Your spiritual power brings great blessings in loving service of the divine. Let me try and refocus a little bit. Okay. So if somebody needed a confirmation, a word of support, there you go. Uh, let's see, for masculines we have visualize success. See yourself doing well in this situation and have faith in a positive outcome. Do this. Nope. Or maybe this <laughs> will help. Yeah, no. Today I decided to record in a different mode and I don't think it works well with the cards. Now I'm remembering that was the main reason why I stopped doing it. But anyway, you know, what's life without a little experiment and improvisation, right? <sighs> All right, so, um, yeah, it's very important to have faith. And I would say it says visualize success. I would say feel through that success. Whatever that is, whatever, first of all, understand what the positive outcome is for you, you know. And then put yourself into that position and feel through it. And I mean it, like, literally. What does it feel like in your body, in your heart? What kind of emotions does it bring to you? What does it make you want to do? I don't know what that celebration would be like for you. Get yourself into that space, into that energy field, energy vibration. That's how you're going to be attracting that outcome. I'm not saying that that's, the only, that's enough, you know, like, depending on what that is. Obviously, this is a collective reading continue doing what feels right like in terms of actions in terms of steps but this can be an additional not can be but this, this is good to use in addition as an additional step because you know you're making it easier for that success to come in let's put it that way okay let me do this thread and in this view at least you can uh, get some of the some of the cards. We'll see. I'm I'm thinking about um, using a table again in my usual setup with the background. Maybe I'll finally get to that. Uh, check it out. Yeah, experiment with the camera. That could be my experiment this this weekend. We'll see. We'll see. You have, we have the hierophant at the bottom of the deck. I know that you can't see it very well, so I'm just gonna do this. <laughs> But yeah, it's a little bit of a Jesus Christ picture here, actually. Which is interesting, right? Because usually the Hierophant is the priest. It's like the representation of the divine on earth. Which Jesus Christ technically was as well. But 
yeah, it's a little bit more down to earth and a little bit more church based. Uh, but I like that this is more spiritual teacher based, you know. Like we're supposed to remember about our calling as spiritual teachers in our communities. Bottom of the deck here, page of wands, yes. Yeah. So this is like the traveler, someone who is on a journey, who is open to new knowledge, to the adventures, to learning from experience, from life experience. Feminines, your energy is judgment clarified by four of swords. Yeah, to me, this is big time. Uh, I spoke about the connection with inner child and doing something fun I, in one of the latest readings, right? So to me, this is a continuation of it where insights are coming through when you have, when you are at a place of inner peace, when you are uh, at a place where you can be like, in this deck, this picture is more about like, even hiding a little bit from the outside world, right? It may sound a little weird, but sometimes, and that's why we sometimes stop ourselves from that, right? Like, especially if you have a family, if you live with someone, like, it's going to be weird, right? If you just decide to hide from them. But this is sometimes exactly what is needed. You don't have to put labels on it, right? But you need space for yourself, where you can be yourself, where you can do whatever you need to do. You, you want to do a head, headstand, you want to scream out loud i don't know um you want to color a picture like your five-year-old version of self would do i don't know work on a puzzle binge watch something whatever is needed right but when you get into that space of peace and uh enjoyment and experiencing something fun and good and taking care of yourself that's another side of this card those insights are coming through in a much easier way and also like the channel itself is much cleaner right so you don't have as much judgment oh, yeah judgment can have a positive and negative connotation as well right so you don't have the negative judgment that your ego places on the information right you're receiving that judgment call and receiving the guidance for being in your light worker power for exploring that and applying that into your life because it starts with you and your own reality your own life before you can help somebody else right you're supposed to be that light for yourself and for your loved ones for the feminines we have the empress clarified by two of one for the masculines i'm sorry <sighs> you see it's funny because masculines always get feminine cards in their in their reality in their um consciousness but yeah, essentially there, it's interesting because to me, in this, in this case, this is embracing their inner feminine. It's looking at the energy from a different... It's learning more kindness, compassion, and nurture themselves. How to be that for someone else. And it is weird for a lot of masculines. It may sound strange in this day and age, but for a lot of masculines, it's still a little um skittish to those kind of vibrations and you know like in the guy community especially if we're talking about masculine energies specifically men right like if it's in a female body it's still more like society driven still more uh, a little more um straightforward right plus there is the physicality to it the physiology all that hormones um they all it's it's amazing how on that biological level we are already prepared to um specific activities specific goals and if you think about it right if we're talking about female right like giving birth to kids and taking care of them um it makes sense right there are certain aspects that are necessary to perform those roles right so it's a little more natural for masculine energy in a in a male body for men it's not like that at all because again historically and on the physiological level they have very different tasks that they're supposed to perform and like historically there is a biology in general and also like the way our psyche kind of goes through evolution from ancient times right that they had very different tasks that they were supposed to perform and it's almost like compassion and kindness would be in the way of those of 
protecting, of being strong, of, you know, making those difficult decisions of survival, essentially, for themselves and their community. Um, so now it's like, it's all coming back, but it isn't like, and this is about making choice, actually, right? But this is supposed to be a conscious choice now. It doesn't come naturally. It's just something that they need to recognize that is needed to build uh, healthy communication, to build healthy relationships with people around, especially with feminines, but not only, right? Because these are the, the universal qualities. These are the qualities that help connect with another person. That's why as light workers, empathy is one of our greatest tools, right? Because that's how we, on all and any imaginary levels, how we connect to another person. <sighs> okay. Masculines are working on that. There we go. Because they're, and that's the amazing part, because they're consciously understanding that that's important. That's what the, they've been lacking. And it's something they can learn. <laughs> Um, additional question. Ace of Swords clarified by Six of Cups. So, yeah, here essentially it's the truth about what the soul connection, um, how deep the soul connection goes between the twins, right? The connectedness on 5D level, um, how many synchronicities we can see, right? And like other ways in which it manifests. For feminines, we see, we have devil and four of pentacles. So for me, it's like feminines can see, you know, with one of the main tools and exercises for the twins is the mirror exercise, right? As part of the inner work or shadow work uh, is um, how do we recognize, right? Or how does the behavior of our uh, divine counterpart uh, can show us different themes and topics that we are supposed to work on, right? So this is speaking to that, but it's not just like if my twin is, I don't know, rude or reckless or whatever, like that means that's something that I have, right? That I'm rude and reckless to other people, not necessarily, but it, it's not always that direct, right? Match, like this is our problem. It means that's your problem. But their rudeness and recklessness, in my example, can be triggering for you, right? And can speak to your older wounds and certain toxicity that needs to be healed, right? Not saying that you're toxic, but somebody was toxic to you, right? That caused limitations, it caused, caused being closed off, uh, and it caused you to be extra sensitive in those cases, right? And that's something to work on. Not to say that you know, if some if, if your twin is being rude to you, that it's your problem and you're supposed to work on accepting that. No, not at all. But it's it's more like, okay, you received feedback from them, then detach, especially if they're in that energy, right? Detach. Then go into your own space and work on those topics, on the feelings that you had, right? On the pain that you felt. Work with that pain. Try to detach from specific person or people. Work more through what you're feeling, what it speaks to, right? Because there is a very, very good chance that it will speak to to earlier wounds when you were much younger, you know, and it was a while back. And uh, and that's that's your task. That's your essentially your homework. That's where your twin is helping you. Uh, but then, of course when this is healed, when it's time to reconnect, you know, whatever, whatever divine timing comes in, then it's for you to build the boundaries so that you don't just, you don't make it okay, right? But you're explaining to them and you can then be in a much healthier spot to communicate that to them, that, you know, you did this, 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 this was rude. This is not okay. These are the ways you could do it in a healthy way. For example, right? Whatever your situation is and however far you feel like you can go with it. But at the very least, you can say, okay, you were rude to me here, there, there. And I'm not accepting that in my close relationship. So I'm sorry, but unless you're willing to do better than that, we won't be in touch. We won't be in communication. You know, uh, something along those lines. And another point I'm going to add for those people who feel this is a little discouraging <laughs> is that, uh, and you know, they say like, whatever you do for the for yourself, you do for the twin. Uh, if you work through these patterns and you do healing for real, not like, oh yeah, now I get it. 
right? It still doesn't necessarily mean it's healed, but when it is, um, it will be reflected in the way your twin interacts with you, almost if by magic. And for some, it will mean that that healed energy will translate to them and they will not be as defensive, as toxic in those specific situations. For others, it will mean that it was supposed to be your lesson, right? And once it's learned, then it just goes away. And 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 in those examples, sometimes you would reconnect with the person and be like, remember how you were rude to me, blah, 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 six months ago? Or you said those terrible things to me, I'm still thinking about it. And that would be like, what? No, I never said that. That's That's that part where it's not really part of them, but it needed to be said then and there to provide that input for you. Something to unpack. I'll try to finish this up uh, faster. This is getting a little long. So for the masculines, we see the star and ace of cups. Yeah, so for them, this connection goes deep because it helps them go to the core of who they are and what their mission is here. It's also opening them up, them up to new levels of uh, unconditional love and self-love that they never saw before because of how wounded and beaten they've been by life in many different ways, right? It, it gets you tainted. It makes you more afraid and guarded, right? And this opens them up to new, new levels of love that they feel and they can uh, share with others. What would the feminines like to say to masculines? The virtue is just three of wands and three of cups, three and three. So they're basically saying that they want right now for the friendship to develop, that that's like the goal, that's the next step. And they can, they, they are thinking about ways that you could discuss and plan and work on projects together, some, something specific and how you would be celebrating the success together, you know, because you're so in sync and kind of like think alike that they know that things that make feminists, I mean, know that things that make them happy, that feel good to them, will feel good and will make you happy as well, divine masculines watching. This is pretty cool. It's like, you know, like not everybody gets it, but I know that that person will definitely get it. What would masculines like to say to feminines? King of Cups, King of Swords, clarified the King of Cups. Yeah, so they are learning to kind of to perfect themselves in their mindset and their conscious space, but stay open and still kind of have that emotional side on the back end. And um, it's not an easy task for them to try to balance the intuitive guidance with their logical mind because they're used to using the logic so much, right? And have plan B and double checking things and believing the facts of what they see in front of them. So this is like next level growth that they are working on and that's how they want to show up for their divine partner. Okay, I hope this was good for you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Love you all and I'll be back with more readings very, very soon. I feel better now, so that's the key thing. And please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye.